This is Sundar Pichai. Recently, he's been put in charge of a whole bunch of stuff at Google. Chrome, Android, apps, search. If you use a Google product, chances are he's running it. Why does that matter? Well, Google's kind of a big deal for technology, and what he thinks about technology is going to be what Google thinks of technology. So if we can understand what he believes, we can get a small glimpse into the future of tech. Every year, Google holds a huge developer conference called Google I.O. It's a place for them to let developers know what they're thinking about for the next year. And what Google's thinking about for the next year involves a lot of high-end computer learning. So this is your first I.O., I think, where you are fully, completely, officially in charge of everything that's getting presented. Has that sort of changed anything about the way that you guys run I.O.? Or like, is there like a theme that you're sort of able to fully like be in charge of? At a high level, I think, you know, I think of what we are doing uh, in terms of two core things. Okay. Uh, we really want to work on big problems uh, that help solve big problems in users' lives, right? And we want to do it at scale. We want to do it for everyone. The second is our core mission statement, uh, which is to organize users' information. And for me, uh, uh, you know, a lot of that means how do you do it in the current world, in the, in the mobile context, because that's what users are grappling with. For me, when I look at mobile, it's been one of the most amazing things we have all seen. Uh, but from, from a user standpoint, they're deluged with information, which is, which is great. They get a lot of stuff done, uh, but we think we can help do it better. So you will see us talk about how we can take Google Now uh, and make it work better in the context of uh, you know, your phone. And if you're looking for information in the context of using applications, how can we do that? If you listen to what Sundar is talking about, you can see how it applies to everything that Google is announcing here at I.O. Photos is going to give you all of your photos in the cloud, and it's going to use Google's computers to help you search them. Android M has this crazy new feature called Now on Tap that can search inside apps and give you suggestions for what you want to do. And even Cardboard is using Google servers to stitch together 360-degree 3D virtual reality video. They're all examples of Google's advancements in machine learning. It gives everyone the power of Google's supercomputers right on their phone. Supercomputers for you or me is great and all, but Google's next step is to bring them to people that haven't had computers at all. So I've been talking to a bunch of people over the past couple of weeks, and a phrase I'm hearing over and over again is, you know, the next billion. You know, there's a billion people using Android. Uh, how do we get the next billion? Um, and it seems like you guys are doing a lot. Uh, but like, what do you think is like the most effective? Where are you going to have the most gains? You know, the entire PC industry reached about 1.7 billion people. We are truly dealing with the first computing platform which is going to touch people at scale. Mm -hmm. At a core, we want to build products for everyone. And so at a, at a basic level, at a foundational level, both providing computing and making it accessible, uh, which is why we are interested in Android One, we are interested in affordable Chromebooks, and to thinking about connectivity over time, which is why we are doing things like Project Loon. Project Loon is probably the most obvious example of how Google is trying to reach the next billion. It's floating giant weather balloons over remote regions of the world to provide internet access. And it's this kind of crazy stuff that I find really interesting about Google as a company. It's shown interest in AI, robotics, and even curing death. And there's also programs like ATAP, which combines hard science with incredibly short deadlines to create things like modular phones and radar-enabled wearables that are so ambitious they hardly seem believable. It seems like a lot of this stuff is like really cool and interesting, but it's hard for me to see a path for it to be anything more than like a cool experiment. Uh, and so I'm, wa I'm wondering like what your feeling is about these different divisions within Google that are doing crazy stuff, and like should they just keep doing crazy stuff, or should stuff be like pushed to become productized or become a core part of Google? We do them because we we believe that software is at a stage where you know, software increasingly is playing a more and more critical role in solving things, which it didn't before. Okay. So to me, when I look at cars, people spend an inordinate amount of time in cars. These are resources which are very poorly utilized. Uh, right now, as we speak, you know, you can look outside and you can see all the cars which are parked. Right, the cars we rented, we rented to get here is just sitting in the parking lot. That's right, so they yeah. get used less than 10%. So mm -hmm. we see these problems and we see, okay, can we solve it at scale? And does computing play a part in it, uh, software and computer science? And while the effort may seem ambitious or crazy, uh, you know, we take a very disciplined approach inside, right? Okay. You know, so those are thought through like businesses which we are building. And it's just that we are willing to take a long-term view, 
but we run them in a very disciplined way. Uh, our research can be longer term, uh, and we do that precisely in research. You know, when we take research projects like Google ATAP or our core research, we never know whether some of them even makes viable business applications, but we want to push the technology uh, at times because you don't know what's possible on the other side. Okay, I'll admit that it's totally a cliche to say that Google is trying to give everybody a supercomputer in their pocket, but that is really what they're trying to do. It's an egalitarian vision of the future of computing, and even if you're not a fan of all of their advertising and tracking, it's still hard not to be inspired by Sundar's vision. The thing which attracted me to Google uh, and to internet in general is that it's a great equalizer, right? And so to me, I've always been struck by the fact that Google search worked the same mm -hmm. if, as long as you had access to computer with connectivity, if you were a rural kid anywhere, or if you were a professor at Stanford or Harvard. And, and to me, you know, I want Google to strive to push to do that, uh, not just build technology uh, for a certain segments, right? For me, it's, it matters that, you know, we drive technology as, a, as an equalizing force, as an enabler to uh, everyone around the world.